Hello and welcome to day 15 of 30 days of Lightroom. Today we're going to show you wonderful ways to edit your portraits in Lightroom. Hello and welcome back to our series where we teach you literally everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic in 30 days. Today we're talking about editing portraits. Now for me, I love to make sure that the viewer, whoever's looking at your photo, is focusing on the subject's face. So you can do a lot in Lightroom to enhance that. You can make their face a little bit brighter, maybe make the background a little bit darker, and we're going to work on things like enhancing your subject's eyes and really making that portrait pop. Let's go ahead and jump in and show you how to do it. So here we are in Lightroom. I'm in my library module and then check this out. We have our portrait editing.cr2. This is a raw file that you can download and follow along totally free. Just click on the link right down below. So with this raw file, we're gonna have a lot of editing capabilities. Let's go ahead here to our develop module. This is looking really good. Now, the first thing I wanna do here on the right hand side, you can see I haven't made any adjustments here. Let's go ahead and start by clicking on auto. I think this is kind of like always a great place to start. You can see it worked on recovering our highlight information. It brought those down, brought our shadows a little bit brighter. Okay, did a lot of nice work and even add some vibrance, which I really appreciate. Okay, already this is off to a good start. I'm gonna hit the slash key that's above return or enter to see there's our before and after. So we're gonna be clicking on this quite a bit. Okay, now one thing that I would like to do, kind of first thing that jumps out at me is actually this background color. It's real pretty, but I wanna match this background color with the flowers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. Let's go ahead and click here on our masking and we're gonna to go to where it says select, let's go to select subject and see what this does. So this is gonna select our subject. You can see it's selected subject and it's selected the flowers and things like that. Okay, now this is real cool because if I invert this selection, then it's actually gonna be selecting the background. So we're gonna go right to this mask here and we're gonna go dot, dot, dot and I'm gonna click one where it says invert mask, okay? And now it's affecting this background area. So what I'm gonna do over here in my editing, I have a lot of editing capabilities. I can adjust my exposure, my color temperature. I can even go all the way down to where we see point color. Let's open this up, okay, point color. And now I can click right here and I can grab this color, okay? How cool is this? And I can actually shift the hue. So I can shift this hue left or right within my mask. And look at that, I'm able to match these flowers quite a bit better. How cool was that? So with this point color, I can just turn this off or on. We're able to match those flowers and that's looking really, really good. All this within a mask of our subject that we inverted. How cool is that? Alrighty, I think it's great. <laughs> I love masking in Lightroom. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new mask. Speaking of masks, let's create and make another one. I think that a lot of the times a great thing to do is make your subject just their face just a tiny bit brighter in exposure and it helps the viewer look at the subject's face. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. We're gonna go here. You can totally do select subject, but oftentimes I, I like to do a radial gradient. You can click here in the center and kind of drag this out. There we go, mostly highlighting on the person's face. And we're just gonna bring our exposure up just a tiny bit. Don't go so far, okay? Just a tiny bit is really good. And then we're gonna bring up our shadow level just a little bit as well. Okay, so we made the subject's face a little bit brighter. Okay, we can see there's a before and after just turning off all of our masks. Okay, but now I want to make the rest of the image just a little bit darker. We want to bring that exposure down a little bit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and create a new mask and then we're going to do it with a radial gradient as well. So we're going to click here in the center, and kind of drag out like this. Okay, and then very similar to what we did earlier where we inverted this mask. We started off by selecting the subject and inverted it to select the background. Well, with this radial gradient, I don't want to affect the center. I want to affect everything else. I want to affect what's outside of this radial gradient. So again, here we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We're going to go dot, 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 invert mask three. Okay, now you're going to see it's going to affect everything except my subject's face. And here we're going to take our exposure slider and we're just going to bring that down just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy with it, just down a little bit. And you know what we're going to do? I'm just going to take our color, our saturation down. I like this blue, but for me, it's like, it's drawing a lot of attention. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the saturation. We're just going to drag that down just a little bit. Not, not too crazy, just a little bit. And I think that's going to be a little bit of a nicer. So we brought our saturation a little bit farther down and we brought our exposure down. So just turning that mask off and on, you can do that with this little eye 
icon. There we go. And then you can just do all your masks off and on to choose your, so you can start to see this effect. And then this, where I made my subject's face a little bit brighter, you know what we're going to do? We're going to expand that and make that a little bit bigger. There we go. It's looking really good. And then we're going to maybe make that just a little bit brighter. Grab that exposure slider. Okay. It's looking great. Fantastic. Now, at any time, we're going to go ahead and click off of our masks here. At any time, you can hit the slash key, which is above enter or return, and see your before and after. So this is import, and this is the after. I think already we're looking good. You can see in the import, this is so bright down here in this contrasting color. I'm, I'm looking at this a lot. But here in the after, I'm not looking at this as much. It's kind of matching here, and I'm looking more at our subject. Okay, looking great. So now it's time to get back into masking and start working on more details for the subject. So we're gonna go back to the masking and we're gonna work on her eyes because if you just edit a person's eyes, it's gonna make a huge difference in the photo. Let's hold space bar and then click and zoom in so we can see this is her eyes. This is this beautiful photograph. Let's go ahead and create a new mask and we're gonna use the brush tool, okay? Now the brush tool, we have a lot of options in terms of size and feathering and flow and density. Let's go ahead and talk about those. Size is pretty self-explanatory, right? Bigger or smaller. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and choose smaller brush. You can also use the open and close brackets on your keyboard. Now, feathering, let's go ahead and start with a low feather. Like, let's say I wanna brighten up this subject's eyes here a little bit. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Command plus to zoom in. You wanna brighten up the subject's eyes, but I don't want the edge to be that hard of an edge, right? So that's where feathering comes in. You can bring that feathering up and then, there we go, now it's going to have a nice soft edge and you can kind of just like make sure that that's going to look nice and natural rather than have such a hard edge there. Okay, now the other thing we're going to talk about is flow. So if your flow is set to really low, basically this will allow you, you have to paint over an area like many times to actually like build up this effect. And you can see I'm going over it many, many times and it's starting to make this effect. You can see like with this red highlight, if you bring up your flow, you don't have to go over an area as many times. Now flow can actually be really nice because for blending purposes, if you have a low flow, it's actually way easier to blend. You can see I'm using a slightly lower flow here, just kind of painting in circles and I'm able to get a nice natural result. So that's where that is. Now density, let's just go ahead and bring our uh, flow all the way up. Density, if your density is all the way up, you're gonna see all the way towards the edge. If you bring your density down, it's basically just gonna affect just like the center of wherever you brush stroke. So I, I personally could just generally leave the density all the way up with the brush tool. Okay, that's looking great. Now with these brush adjustments that I made, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit, okay? What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna go ahead and take my exposure and we're just gonna brighten that up a little bit. Okay, that's looking really good. Now, this area where we did, you know what, we're gonna brighten it up, but I'm also gonna bring our color temperature a little bit more yellow. That's looking pretty good there. We're not gonna make it just as bright. And then, you know what, I'm gonna just reduce our exposure just a little bit more, keep it nice and natural. And you can see the left eye looks actually pretty good because we used a low flow, right? We used a low flow, there we go. And we just kind of painted that in how we liked it, okay? Now this eye here is a bit too strong because basically, uh, I can click on show overlay, it has some hard edges here and you can really start to see it. So if I turn off show overlay, what I can do is I can actually start now hold alt or option. And when I hold alt or option, it changes my brush to the eraser, okay? Or you can simply click on erase. But you can see it's plus right now. So if I were to paint around my image, it's going to add to that brush. If I hold alt or option, it allows me to minus. And then I have the same settings with feathering and flow that I'm able to minus this out. So I'm holding alt or option to minus this effect out and just give me a much more natural effect on this other eye. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Let's hold Alt or Option here, and we'll just minus that one out there as well. I wanna make sure we have a nice, natural looking edit, okay? Especially with eyes, you wanna, <laughs> you wanna take your time and make sure that looks good. All right, fantastic. I think that's looking really nice. Let's go ahead here and uh, zoom in here a little bit, and then hit plus. Maybe make our brush a little bit smaller. Fantastic. All right, so let's take a look. There we go. Let's just turn this mask off or on. Okay, so we'll just click on this little eyeball here and you can see there's the before and after with your masks. I think that's looking really good. Definitely a little bit more subtle on this eye. 
This side, maybe we'll just hold Alt or Option and kind of paint that away. There we go. That's looking really nice. Okay, nice natural effect there. Now, I also want to add some texture and a little bit of clarity to my subject's eyes as well. So we're going to go ahead and create a new mask. Okay, and we're going to go right here to the brush tool once more. Okay, there we go. Let's hit plus. And then this time we're going to bring our flow a bit farther up. And I'm going to paint over top of like our subject's eyelashes. There we go. Fantastic. Make sure we get our subject's iris here. And then we're going to get the bottom eyelashes there as well. I'm going to add some texture to this, which is kind of like sharpening. And when you do that, you really don't want to like sharpen the white part of a person's eye. Okay. And you don't want to sharpen up like around this area because it's going to make their like you know, any wrinkles or, you know, folds in their skin, it's going to enhance that. Okay. So we don't want to select those areas. So just the eyelashes, the pupil and the bottom eyelashes. So let's hold space bar, move around and we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So I'm just basically, uh, selecting just the areas that I want to increase the, uh, there we go. It's kind of like sharpening what I'm about to do with texture and clarity. Okay, great. So now that I've made those changes, on the right hand side, we're going to go and scroll on down until we see, there we go. It's uh, here in, where is it? Effects. Okay. Let's just close everything down because it's starting to get a little bit cumbersome and you're like, dude, I can't keep up with you. What's going on? Okay. So, okay. Over here on the right hand side where you have your brushes, then you go to all of your little edits and we're going to go to effects, open that up. And then we have texture and clarity. So let's hit, turn off the show overlay. And we can see our texture is just going to bring up, look at that nice detail in the eye. There we go. So bring that up a little bit and then bring up some clarity as well. And that's just going to like really make a nice difference in your photos. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And then with this mask, we're just going to click here to see there's a before and after. Okay. And you can even bump up your texture and clarity even more if you want, making a nice effect for those eyes. And that like, even if you zoom out here, okay, well, let's just go ahead and zoom out. We're just going to see that's going to make a big effect on those eyes. You can see there's that before and after looking really good. Let's go ahead and hit fit. And then we're going to use the slash key there so you can see the before and after. So here's our before and our after. You can see the before we're bringing a lot of viewers attention to this area because it's so saturated here in the after we've matched the color and I'm definitely looking at my subject's face a little bit more. So when you're editing portraits, it's always the goal to draw your viewer, the person who's looking at your photograph to the subject's face. Okay. So there's our before and there's the after. I feel like it's looking definitely better. Not a crazy edit, but we're looking better for sure. Okay. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. We're going to go to hundred percent zoom here looking really good. And we're going to go in our develop module. We're going to show you a little bit of like spot healing brush removal. Now let's say you have a couple of spots in a person's skin. This person's skin is uh, really, really great, but I want to show you how to do it just in case you need to. Now you can use your healing brush tool and this will simply allow you to paint over an area. So let's go ahead. We're going to move down to this area and simply paint over this area and it's going to automatically remove that. Okay. So the healing brush tool will find, I can even zoom way in so we can, you know, you never want to zoom this far into, you know, <laughs> your own face, by the way, because then you will be like, oh, my pores. But, you know, I have to show you this for our editing. So you can simply paint over any area that you'd like to. And the healing brush tool, which is right over here. So remove and then your healing brush tool is going to do a great job with all these little areas. OK, so like this little thing you want to get rid of, just simply paint over it and it'll completely get rid of it. So you can do skin retouching here in Lightroom Classic as well. And then any larger areas, you can see this thing, maybe it's a little dirt or dust, just paint right over that with the healing brush tool. And look at that, it in, like immediately disappears. Okay. So this is really great for blemishes on skin. Like, I'm not sure what that is, a little piece of dirt, boop, it's completely gone. Now, if you want to do anything larger, like if you want to remove a larger object, let's say you want to try to remove this uh, object in the person's hair. Well, then you're going to move like you're still in your remove tool. You're going to use your remove option here with generative AI. So anything larger, you're going to go ahead and use generative AI. OK, and you're just going to go ahead and paint over the entire object. I like this inner hair. I just want to show you if you did want to remove it, how to do it. OK. So we're going to paint over that entire thing. Make sure it's completely painted. Okay. 
and then we can see it's selected. I can add or subtract from my selection. And then we're going to go right here to where it says remove. OK, this is using AI to remove this and it's going to boom, completely gone. And we got new hair. Ah, Amazing. Now here you can see it's used generative remove. OK, and we even have variations. I can click here and see my different variations of the hair to get the one that's a little bit more nice and natural. And I think that looks good. I liked it before, but you know, it works in the after as well. You can always go into your history and you can just go back in your history a couple of spaces and you can see there it is. So a lot of editing, whether you're doing an individual pore level, that's for the healing brush tool. If you're gonna be removing a larger area, then you wanna use generative AI. Well, I think we've done a great job editing this portrait. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go up to this select variation where I removed that because the before and after is gonna be more impressive. Let's go to our fit view here and let's click on that slash key for our before and our after. So again, I, I'm not going crazy here. The goal isn't to like do a super, super strong edit. The goal is gonna be, let's make sure we're focusing more on our subject's face and then remove any type of distractions that we need. And we can do that with masking. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you watch tomorrow where we're gonna teach you more Lightroom editing. Thanks again, I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.